Hi, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today. Um, just to let you all know, it will be recorded. So today we have digitizing sales process and spare part sales with Part Trap. We have Magnus and Joanna on the call today. And they'll be giving us a presentation as well as a demo. If you have any questions, feel free to type them into the question box and we will get to them as we go along. And I will turn it over to Magnus now who will start our webinar. Okay, thanks for that, Michelle. And um, good morning or good afternoon, whatever, whatever you are in the world. Um, as Michelle said, uh, we will hear today uh, talk, or Johanna will also from Kempi most likely will present how Kempi has taken the advantage of the digital sales for spare parts. And uh, but before heading over to to um, Johanna, I'll just make a short introduction of. Um, of part up and why we selected this type of topic. Uh, first of all, with part up, we have been in business for 25 years. Uh, we have been an Epicor Alliance partner for plus 10 years. And we develop uh, a digital platform which sort of enables digital sales for pure manufacturing companies. And uh, the reason why we have selected this sort of uh, session here today is based on two, two sort of topics. Um, Number one is that um, the profitability for spare part sales for a manufacturing company is, high, is uh, so quite important. It has most likely double digits when it's coming to the margin of the sales. Uh, so that is important to protect that type of business. And um, secondly, uh, is the way that we have discovered over the, the time that most of the time, these type of processes is being handled manually. So what we will talk here today, or yeah, Johanna will present here today, is how you can sort of use a platform like Partra and then so sort of minimize the manual work needs to be, to be done in order to sort of increase your spare part sales. And um, yes, that uh, sort of <laughs> introduction here, Johanna, um, I will sort of hand over to you, basically. Okay, thank you, Magnus. Um, hello from my side as well. Uh, I'm Johanna Heinonen, a business development manager uh, at the company called Kempi. Uh, I've been with the company for 24 years now, started in the back office as a sales assistant, and now for the past five years, I worked as a business development manager, mainly managing different kinds of uh, projects affecting globally our company, and majority of them have been a different um, IT platform or, or like uh, this e-ordering, what we have now and what I will demo to you. I've also been involved as a project member in three of our ERP projects and one of them being when we uh, took Epicor 9 into use and then upgraded Epicor 9 into Epicor 10 a few years back. A uh, few words about Kempi. We are a family-headed and owned company founded in 1949. There's a third generation of, of Kempi family who is now heading the company. We offer premium welding solutions, which consists of welding machines, guns and torches, uh, safety equipment, and then also uh, software, uh, uh, pro software products. Our revenue is about 140 million euros. Our headquarters is in Lahti, Finland. We have 20 subsidiaries, close to 800 employees in 17 countries. We have uh, three factories, one in Finland, one in Italy, and then one in China. Uh, our business is going heavily and majority of the business going through our partner network, which is covering over 70 countries globally. So we have dealers and distributors in many of these countries. And also we have outsourced our services of the welding machines to our partners. Then e-ordering, which is which we call our platform and which I will be demonstrating to you today. For us, what it means is it's an online platform where our registered users, our partners like dealers and distributors and service workshops can um, basically order and find out information about products. So they are not uh, buying anything, they are sending orders to Epicor. So uh, it has an electronic spare part book with exploded views and wiring diagrams where they can order directly products. 
And uh, even though Magnus mentioned that this is uh, about spare part sales, for us, the e-ordering platform is also selling all of our equipment, including spare parts, welding machines, guns and torches, consumables, and even some of the software products. And they can also then follow up the orders that they are making, uh, what we have for them in Epicor. Uh, we have there about 6,000 uh, SKUs. And what they can also do is then uh, query the availability and, and the prices and discounts. Uh, my One of my latest projects was that we upgraded uh, from the um, from to a newer version of, of Partrap's uh, platform. So Partrap 1 was taken into use and we went into live on 6th of April this year. Currently, we have about 1,500 users globally. That includes also our internal users who mainly use it for the spare part, electronic spare part book functionality. 50% of the, all the orders come through e-ordering globally. We have it set it up in 13 languages. We have 14 sites or markets, as Partrap calls them there, uh, which uh, is same as in Epicor's site. We actually have 14 different companies for each of our Kempi companies and subsidiaries there. We also have different roles. Since some of, some of our partners, uh, for example, want to restrict users of seeing prices or not all of the users are able to send orders into Epicor. All right, then, Magnus, you had some questions for me, yeah. I believe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd just like to, to pick up the topic where you sort of talked about the e ordering. What would you say was the three main drivers why Campy sort of wanted to have a platform like the e ordering platform? Yeah, um, our first this kind of a platform was actually taken into use in 2006. So I think we were quite early in the process. Uh, it was with our previous ERP. Then it was most more majorly um, an ordering portal where we wanted to give uh, information and possibility to place orders 24 seven and wanted to encourage our partners for the like the self-service type of, of, of business. And what it meant for us that we also wanted that we could save time in, um, in the back office so that we wouldn't have to manually handle the orders when they were coming through from the portal. Then in 2014, when we implemented Epicor 9, we were at the same time looking for a solution to have an electronic spare part book. And with the Epicor project, we were introduced to Partrap, and there we found the possibility to have the electronic spare part book, but in addition, the ability to send orders or, uh, or order those parts that you have in, in the spare part book. And then we selected and implemented Storefront as our new e-ordering portal. Then in 2019, we uh, recognized new needs to, for, for the and we, uh, the renewal needs for our portal. We wanted to have campaigns. We wanted to update the look and feel. We wanted to add more guided selling kind of features to the system, like integrate our, we have a sales configurator in place. And we also wanted to add product relations. So um, guide the, uh, the users that when they're selecting, for example, certain welding gun, then we can tell which consumables are suitable for that gun. And uh, at the same time, we have also automated the process in Epicor's side. So when the order is sent into Epicor, when it's a normal standard order, no manual handling is needed when it goes to our warehouse for picking. And how, how would you, yeah. yeah, I mean, how would you describe the project? Because on one side, it could be seen as an IT project since you're implementing a new software. But on the other side, as you've seen, okay, this will could also have an operational impact. How would you divide the project in between an IT and operation project? When I look at now this, uh, in, uh, I've been involved in both uh, implementations in 2014 and now in 2019, and especially in this one, when I look at the past, when we made this, and I was thinking uh, the, the involvement of our IT department, it was very minimal actually, because uh, our solutions are on-premise. On so when I needed, uh, assistance from IT side, it was mainly when I needed to give access to the servers uh, so that we could get things up and running. But otherwise, and it is a model what we have in Campy that 
um, these kind of projects are run or owned by the businesses. So in this case, the process and the, the how we wanted to go was defined by sales and logistics, and then the content there and all the product relations and uh, spare part information was input by our after sales team. So um, in our case, it, it wasn't an IT project, and that's the way we, how we handle in Kempi that IT is assisting us when we are evaluating the processes and in the technical side, but the ownership is on the business and operational side in, in all of these kind of projects. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also if we're talking about the IT side as well, how 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 important would you say there is there is the in this this integration into Epicor as um, how would you describe that? Well, it's in the very heart of it, of course, because the most important information that we get from there is is actually from Epicor. And uh, examples there, the data that we get from Epicor are the prices and discounts. They come in real time. Also, we have used the Epicor's price list hierarchies uh, quite heavily, if I could say so. And we also have quantity breaks there in place. So all of those are in use with, when the... Um, dealer is making the order or looking at the prices and the products. Also, availability is uh, taken there from real time. We are actually using the same logic we have in Epicor for our CTP, so capable to promise process. So the dealer actually sees the same date as our back office person who would be manually inputting the order into Epicor when they are looking at the availability. Same thing with parts and part languages. As I said, we have 13 languages in place. So those are taken from Epicor. They are run during the night uh, as a, in, in a cash build run. Uh, in addition to that, the way we define that which of our products are visible and you are able to order from e-ordering, that is also managed in, in, in Epicor's site. And also, if we have products that we've ramped down, we can make an alternate part in Epicor's site, and then that information is passed on to the ordering and the orderers. And in addition to that, they can follow up their orders. All the stages in picking, reserved, uh, picked and packed. And then once we have shipped it out, we also get, uh, offer them a link to follow up the parcel when, it, when, when the forwarder has given us their tracking number. And also, as I said, of course, orders are going into the Epicor and they're instantly there. Once I push confirm in the ordering site, the order is created into Epicor. And from there, we have automated the process that it goes further internally. I mean, this is a quite of a cliffhanger now, uh, <laughs> you're talking. So um, should we show the audience uh, what type of, uh, yeah, platform you have? <laughs> Yeah. Right before you and get I would... started with that, Joanna, we had a question come up. Yep. Um, if you could repeat the ERP system used for the project. ERP is Epicor 10, uh, 2.2500, or I don't remember the exact version, but Epicor 10 is the, Epic, uh, the ERP we are awesome. now connected to. Yes. Thank you. And before we jump into the, I just want to say that uh, one of the reasons why we chose uh, Partrap as our partner was that when in 2016, when we took Epicor into use, it was not a known ERP in Finland. So having a partner that had already made integrations into Epicor was a beneficial to us and, and, and a huge interest and advantage. So we didn't have to start from, from zero in there. So demo is the next step then. All right, I will jump into here. So now you are seeing actually directly a view from one of our exploded views that we have built into storefront. And um, here, talking of spare parts, this is where they can find if they don't know the part number or don't know the description, majority of the service option dealers do know where the part is inside the machine. So we have created exploded views where we have these kind of hotspots showing different parts. And when I click on the hotspot, now it's going to take a demo effect and going to take some time. I can <laughs> see it always happens that way. Always, yes. Always. As a demo goes. Always, even though I try. Yes. And now you can very conveniently then all directly add it 
from here to your shopping cart. And I can say that this was one of the functionalities already in 2014 when we took this into use and uh, when we were planning the renewal of the platform, when we asked our users what they liked about the system, they liked the ability that the buying is, is so easy in here. Now I have a problem that I can't see that. Yep. All right. <laughs> Uh, then in here, what else you can do, you can view from the list all the parts connected to this exploded view and you could order more. So if you look at the pop-up that you have there in front of you, Johanna, yep. um, I think that it says, as you just mentioned before, the, 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 the customer unique pricing and the availability yep. at this very moment, yes. Yeah, it's out the both. Yeah, that's correct, Magnus. Uh, it, it shows this, and this would be the same date as our, if I was now entering this into Epicor as a sales order and would calculate the, the, the availability. And this is from that customers. And I now have a, a customer that's showing just the list prices, but if they had a uh, price list in use, it would show that as well. And I can actually show from the demo environment how it shows if you have quantity, quantity breaks in Epicor available. Um, then what you can do in here, you can view the different, because we have then different pictures, different kind of, uh, kind of um, exploded views within this same family. And so maybe we should also uh, say that the exploded view that in front of you is, is, is a copy of what you have in your CAD system. Yep. Yeah, we haven't integrated it totally so, but yeah, we, we make them uh, separately into here, but it's a copy of that, what we have, have in there. And we could have also, I know that there's an ability to have 3D models, but we have not taken that into use in, in, in here. Um, then uh, what you can, what we have also made in here, what actually took quite a long time in this project for is for us, we wanted to make those product relations and renew how the product tree here in the left, looked like and one of the things that we spent quite a lot of time on although it helped that you could bring these dependencies of these product relations uh, via excel into into epic uh, part sharp one uh, there's a possibility to add different kind of filter panels where we can filter the results. This is more or less the guided selling that I was uh, mentioning about, that they can, there could be more than one, we just have one. So by selecting the model, then the results, what you have in here are filtered through that selection. And also when we go to our MIG guns, for example, <clears throat> There again, you have a view where you have the prices and the guns, but when I open one of these make guns, then to the bottom here, there will appear tabs where you could have the suggested products. And as you have in web shops, you can suggest what else you could buy, but we have accessories that are suitable for this particular gun. We have the list of all the exploded views where that is mentioned. And then also the consumables, again, now in a different categories. Um, so that the user knows that if I have this gun, these are the selection of the next that I could, I could uh, purchase. What we actually customized in here is the view then reverse from here, is that when I look at the specific part, then it again here shows uh, as a standard these where in, where in the exploded views it's 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 in but also now compatible with, with from this side that this neck actually suits to these uh, guns. We also have our own made configurator that was now integrated into uh, order uh, into e ordering and that actually then also has guided steps and selections and the the results can then be returned to the basket. You, you, you said earlier here, Johanna, that, okay, it's also possible to review current orders or invoice at this uh, portal. So yeah, invoices yeah, I'm so not going to show you because that's something, it's possible, but I'm not going to show you because that would mean that I would have to show some customers here. But what I can show is order follow-up. And now I'm using as an internal user where I can change the customer to which I am connected to. This is not 
something that is allowed for our uh, dealers and distributors. But now that I've changed to a customer that I know that have actual orders, and this is order follow-up to all orders, whether or not they have sent them via EDI to us, whether we have manually inputted them into Epicor, or if they have uh, placed the orders um, via e-ordering. So all of the orders in Epicor to this customer are, are visible in here. Now this control panel is bothering me a bit. I can't see all the... So now I have checking uh, all the orders for this customer and in this link, I can uh, track the parcel. These are now closed orders. So when in customer shipment entry in Epicor, we have put the tracking number there. And also in Epicor site for this forwarder, we have defined which URL is. It, so when I click on this link, it leads to the URL and they can follow up their packages. Uh, open uh, orders, they can also see in which stages it is in, in Epic or whether it's being picked or reserved or, or shipped. Has it been any, can you see that there's been any sort of less, um, less pressure on the customer support since now it, this is an open window? from the web into your Epicor system on this particular customer account. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's what we wanted. And that's, 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 that's what it is. That They don't have to call us and ask about where's my order. They can do quite a lot of things uh, by themselves to check from here. And um, that uh, I have to say that seeing the progress, because I was involved in 2014 and now later on, it has changed and more and more people are willing to use the portals themselves and find out information from themselves. As an example, our subsidiary in Poland, all of the orders from dealers come from e-ordering. But then there are countries, maybe more Southern Europe, where the they still prefer to pick up the phone and call. But uh, I think it's more and more moving forward to this, that people want to use this self-service portal and find out. And then again, this is open 24-7. Our customer service is, is not, not all, all that time there. If, if, if you would sort of um, state three sort of success criterias that, okay, these three should, is sort of important in a project, which, which one would you sort of um, state just out of your head? <laughs> just out of your head when you, yeah. uh, <laughs> when you promise not to ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, for me, actually, thinking of, of projects when you're implementing, um, uh, platforms like this or ERP, what uh, what I, I prefer and what we do very often is actually that we have the internal discussion before we start to evaluate. So we, we make our requirement document, which you may remember Magnus receiving from us, quite detailed document of what we want the platform to do and help us to do. And that we do uh, one side because we want to also have a clear vision of what we are trying to do and achieve. But then again, we also try to be as clear and uh, to be able to discuss with, with the vendors what we want to avoid some of the mistakes that might come during the project. Of course, there are always surprises, despite we having the uh, requirement document written for this project as well. There are always some, some uh, dis dis surprises, but uh, uh, yeah. That's that's uh, one of the keys to success, I would say, would be to do the work, homework before you start the project and really have mm -hmm. a clear view what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that was um, a guidance of uh, how to sort of um, take a explode a view or a drawing from your CAD system and import into Partrap and how you can sort of utilize the uh, explode view by making them sort of clickable instead of for each and every customer to know the spare part number in detail. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, and also as you show that not only the sales is also coming to, to serving the customer in the way of, okay, for invoices and how you showed here the actual orders it, it itself, uh, how it can be traced or, or looked up or more monitored by, by the user itself. Yeah. Um, Michelle, I, I don't know, don't know, is it any sort of more uh, in particular questions um, that yep. we... Um... There are a few that came through. Um, so okay. the first yep. one that we got here was how do you pull through the delivery information? Do you have a calculation in Pear Trap? 
mirroring the calculation in Epicor. Uh, this stage, when I'm uh, looking at anything here before or in the cart, when I have not placed the order yet into Epicor, it uh, simulates a capable to process logic that we have in Epicor. It's it's a little bit customized for us, taking into account whether it, it's not totally the free uh, uh, amount in stock. We do take into account per incoming purchases and, and how production takes uh, or incomings from production, but it's actually the same logic that it uses here uh, to show the date. But it's customized for us. There are different ways than I think that you can do it in Partrip for, for other ways, but we wanted to simulate exactly the same process that and logic we have in Epicor's site. Right, then the next one on here was, can you search for a part by serial number? Good question. I think I was able to do that. Yes, we have it in here because I don't use it very much, but I, I actually remember I don't have any serial numbers, not by heart now that I could show it, but we do have the ability in here. And that was standard that came with, with uh, Partrap and they were able to uh, retrieve that from Epicor. And actually also in our case, because in Epicor we have a uh, multi-company setup. So if order comes into the subsidiary, it's via Epicor's intercompany that it's actually supplied from uh, from uh, the mother company. So it's able to handle and show the, the information in those cases as well. We have, looks like three more at the moment. Um, is it possible to connect your e-ordering system directly with customers ERP? I would not say, I'm not sure if it's possible, but I'm, um, we have not done that. It's quite a lot of work. We have a lot of customers, a lot of ERPs. Uh, what we have done instead is then introduce to them an uh, EDI possibility. And then I do know, Magnus, that you actually have like a, uh, something in between, uh, which is versus sending orders from e-ordering and then having an EDI, you have something new, Thomas told me, but uh, where yeah. you are able to, where we're able to actually utilize the um, integration into Epicor. Uh, but I don't know the details of that. But one thing also, what is possible in here before Magnus, you maybe answer if I could just show you what is doable and what we have now advised to our biggest dealers who do have their own ERPs and are not willing to put in and punch in the orders. Um, twice to two systems, what is like a poor man's integration is that as a standard, you can uh, import the cart from a CSV or text file or even copy paste it directly from here and then upload it and, and uh, then it's in your cart and you can send it. So this is what we have mainly used to our dealers in that sense, who with whom we, they haven't then done an EDI integration. Our next one is, does the follow-up apply to open and closed orders? Yes, it does. You can actually hear, I just, so I'm actually in the live environment, so I'm not uh, willing to show so much, and this particular customer doesn't have any open, but it, it is for both, yes. Great. And in and the open, you can actually see then these different stages in our process of sending the order. Great. And the last one I have on here at the moment is how long did it take you to implement from start to finish? Well, this last implementation was a bit tricky in the sense that we signed the contract and started the project when COVID started. And then we, the world was a little bit uncertain. So we took it slowly to start because we didn't know where we were going to go and what the finance is going to be for that year. So. For us, it took about a year, but I would say that in a normal time, it would have taken maybe the six months and majority of that time would have been our internal work, not setting up the system, but creating the contents to product relations and the product tree. So I would say six months would have been without COVID. And yeah. All right, that's all the questions I have so far. Okay. All right, so... Um... I guess maybe that we have um, it took it went a little bit faster than expected. So maybe we have given the audience about twenty minutes extra for today, what they can choose what to do. Um, so Michelle, I believe that um, um, 
for Porter on behalf, we have sort of uh, discussed a, we can see what Johanna just said that um, by starting a project like this, uh, it needs to be sort of evaluated internally of what to procedure. So for that reason, we are willing to offer you as a customer uh, of Epicor and the Epicor user group a free of charge or workshop where you can engage with us with that part trap and we can sort of yeah, see what type of um, situation you have on your company to explore more deeply in this type of solution. So that would be a workshop that we offer free of charge. And uh, I don't know if you, if you have anything more to add uh, or if you feel that you have emptied yourself with all your uh, knowledge. <laughs> no, may, pretty much, I guess. Uh, we didn't go through all everything we do in e-ordering, but that's that's fine, that, that, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Michelle, uh, with that said, I think we are sort of um, finished for today's session. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. And thank you to those on the call yeah. for asking your questions. I think that was super helpful. Um, we will be recording this, so you can go back and listen to anything and then get your contact info if you want to reach out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for all right, today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.